Hello, I'd like to talk about the chain of, dis of custody detectors uh, that I'm working on. Um, I'd like to thank Sam Frank and Tobias Booth, who are the two students who helped me in the preparation of this talk. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about all the students who participated and about the overall concept of our integrating uh, dosimeters. I'm going to describe experimental law cell reader, which we've been con begun constructing during the last year, our prototype self-reading OSL system. I'm going to mention our cesium facility, talk about some depletion experiments, which we managed to do prior to getting the um, prototype together, and uh, some additional work on the characterizing the background, which must be well characterized if you're going to have a chain of custody detector that's inexpensive of the type we're, we're aiming for. So there have been more than 16 undergrads working in my lab during the last 12 months. Many of them are continuing. In addition, three graduate students uh, participated in this research. Um, the students are predominantly in my department, although there are a couple from other universities uh, and departments within the University of Michigan. The concept for the chain of custody detectors is to use um, uh, a do integrating dosimetric material such as thermoluminescent dosimeters, which take ionizing radiation, uh, cause electrons to be trapped in states which can then be released uh, using either light or heat, at which time visible radiation is emitted in proportion to the initial ionizing radiation. Here is shown for thermoluminescent dosimetric materials, or TLDs, the signal that comes out as a function of temperature or time following beginning heating. The different peaks in this signal fade at different rates as a function of time. Typically for the dosimeters you use for radiation protection, they attempt to use peaks which do not fade as a function of time. Therefore, materials for a personnel dosimetry were discarded if they had rapidly uh, fading peaks. Here, you see the signal fading as a function of time for a typical thermoluminescent material, where you see that the higher peaks at higher temperatures fade less rapidly than the lower peaks. It thus occurs that in throwing away materials that have temporal characteristics in their symbols, it signals you are throwing away the ability to extract temporal information. So we are going to use materials that do fade as a function of time, but fade as a function of time at different rates, and use that to extract after the fact from an integrating material the time course of exposure to radiation. That's the basic idea. Uh, if you plotted, for example, ratios of those peaks for thermoluminescent materials, you see that they do change as a time post to radiation. So if you had a simple uh, sudden chronic exposure, uh, as acute exposure to radiation, and you measured the ratio of the peaks, you could then say that a radiation occurred three days ago. From an integrating material that requires no onboard electronics, requires uh, no power while it's collecting the signal. So that would be the simplest case. If you have multiple peaks, you could unfold mathematically and tell what the radiation exposure was as a function of time. So here would be the math that the signal that you get out of an integrating detector is the integral of two functions of fading. One, it's a sensitivity change that could occur prior to the irradiation. And the second, a post-irradiation signal fade integrated over time times the dose as a function of time times the efficiency for the creation of that particular fading signal. If you had multiple signals, you would have multiple equations of this type. It's a rather nasty unfolding, but you could then backfold into time intervals 
how uh, how much radiation was exposed, uh, how much uh, radiation the dosimeter was exposed to over various time periods. Um, this uh, begs the idea that a self-rating TLD or thermoluminescent detector chain of custody detector where you had a very inexpensive material, it is sitting in a given uh, location. You then can interrogate it at any point later in time and from the various signals which arise you would be able to tell what happened as a function of time. However, our research has shown that thermoluminescent detectors are very sensitive to the temperature in the environment and therefore you can fool them. Also controlling the, um, the, the temperature and the subsequent response that you get is something of an experimental difficulty. Therefore, I have for many years wanted to switch from using thermoluminescence to optically stimulated luminescence, but no one knows about the temporal fading properties of these materials. Uh, this is probably the first and possibly the only work which is unpublished about this, is that we build a very crude reader in 2005 and uh, by sitting in the dark for months, a graduate student uh, was able to measure the fading of OSL signals as a function of time. By stimulating at one color of light, collecting the net emission, and then stimulating at another with another color of light and collecting that total emission, you see that in fact the signals from OSL from the same material fade as a different function of time, depending on which signal you are extracting. There are several challenges, which you might guess, in developing self-reading temporal dosimetry. First, uh, you need to identify OSL materials. The, the experimental readers on the market give you a choice of two stimulation colors and no spectroscopic light collection, and they cost about $300,000. We need an experimental rayer that would be sensitive enough, get, allow us to stimulate with lots of different colors of light, and give us spectroscopic output information in an extremely sensitive way that discriminates the stimulation light from the emitted light. Secondly, you have to be acceptably sensitive. So if you're going to make a little portable device, it has to be sensitive so you couldn't use photomultiplier tubes. We have some ideas uh, about making light detectors very, very sensitive for these materials. So we're developing a self-reading prototype. Third, um, we realize that when you stimulate optically stimulated materials, you never completely clear the signal. So that each time you stimulate to reuse the material, you have to correct for the prior, prior signal. So that's a big mess statistically, and, and you're always subtracting a number which may be quite large. So we needed to characterize that. In order to get to work on characterizing things, we obtained the simple commercial system in use in the medical field to start characterizing the materials that are used for personnel dosimetry. And finally, you need to understand the background radiation, since that will continuously be contributing to an integrating dosimeter. So this was our 2005 experimental OSL rater. It was built by an undergraduate with a 5K grant from the University of Michigan. It simply has a photo multiplier tube. It has some high intensity light emitting diodes. You hand swap them out. You had this in a light type container and we had it controlled by a, a DAC. This is our 2015 uh, University of Michigan Experimental OSL reader design. We are using a modern National Instruments DAC board. Uh, we have found new PMTs, uh, two sets of PMTs with different sensitivities. And in fact, the price has come down so that we can afford up to eight of these and we can filter them so that we will then get spectroscopic light emission information, which should reveal something about the OSL traps. 
And um, it's going to be very uh, controlled. It's going to be, the stim lights are new LEDs from China, which are much more sensitive. We've been able to do the design. We haven't built it yet, but we've achieved, uh, we've obtained all the components. Uh, it's a substantial improvement over the light output two to three times the stem light, more colors available. We've cut down the timing by a factor of 10 so we can uh, reject original light, and we're gonna have flexible sample size and type. We also had in collaboration with a company, RVT, has constructed a self-reading prototype for us using existing materials. We were unable to evaluate this year because our cesium-137 source had an unusual failure. These have been in place for 40, 50 years. We had an unusual failure. Um, we caught it and we got lucky. We got to play around with radiochromic dosimetry film and we were able to get the reader back in place and are now recharacterizing it. Uh, we have an H3D camera. This shows the repaired source as well as the scatter from that source. So we're going to really characterize our facility so we can do precise amounts of dose to our chain of custody detectors. Uh, the depletion experiments, we, we came up with a formula to describe these. This is a commercially available aluminum oxide uh, carbon doped OSL material. These measurements were made by hand. More than 100,000 measurements were collected by undergrad and grad students. Uh, we were able to model them and fit the data. The beauty of this is not only can you make more than one measurement on your dosimeter, you can sample the distribution. So with OSL materials, this is the distribution of signals from an integrating dosimetric material. And you can use the simple statistics to say how much you must sample in order to get a given degree of confidence for a given accuracy. What we discovered was that in use in the medical environment, they are not utilizing these readers properly. They need to be 95% confidence with a desired accuracy of 1%. They need to make 35 measurements to do that. They're making three. So we have actually accidentally impacted radiotherapy in the performance of this particular work. In addition to characterizing background, we, we are putting a monitor on the rooftop. We're going to continuously collect uh, lots of parameters, including the spectrum of radiation around the, the department. And we have obtained all of the equipment using CVT funds to have a comprehensive monitoring of background, including discrimination of radon, gammas, uh, stuff coming over from the hospital. We discovered we had a radon chamber in the basement, which is practically as good as the Bowser Warner radon chamber in Ohio, because there's no ventilation down a nice big uniform radon in the room. This is creating lots of cool stuff for everyone from freshmen all the way up to seniors. In the future, we're going to assemble everything we got together as of last week in our OSL reader, so we'll have a great reader. We're going to test version one uh, to see what our baseline sensitivity is for the light detection methods that we concluded will work for this. We're going to finish uh, fixing our cesium facility. By the way, our discovery of the failure um, has been written up as operating experience in the dosimetry community in Canada and internationally because no one observed uh, this particular phenomenon. And as a consequence, people are going to be quality controlling their dosimetry uh, sources a little better. The MicroStar, we are characterizing that. We're going to continue fading in environmental effects studies and we're going to complete installation of our monitoring system. We hope to also create a website which will continuously display information and provide public information both about the CBT projects that are going on, but background radiation in general. Thank you. Um, that method is normally used in spectrometers, but it's very limited by, uh, by resolution. 
the other uh, method, which is uh, uh, much more promising, 